ABC Illawarra is uh, where you are. Now, as you might have heard over the last couple of days, we've been doing this story uh, about most of Australia's popular car brands collecting and sharing driver data. Now, this can be the way you accelerate or brake, or it could be video footage of you in the car or fingerprints, or it could be your voice as well. For instance, Kia and Hyundai collect voice recognition data from inside their cars and sell it to an artificial intelligence software training company. Do you recall agreeing to that when you drove off in your new Kia or even your used Kia? Uh, Katina Michael from uh, UAW's Faculty of Business and Law is uh, one of Australia's leading researchers in this space in uh, online uh, data collection and privacy. And she joins us uh, once again here at ABC Illawarra. Hello, Katina. How are you, Nick? I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, I'm imagining that this does not come as any surprise to you, but what can we do about it? Uh, It comes as no surprise, especially as uh, we're all gearing towards this connected cars and Internet of Things future. Uh, that will be, you know, cars being connected to smart city infrastructure and traffic management systems for optimization. But what can we do about it? I think we've got to inform people. Uh, we always talk about informed consent with respect to sensitive data uh, that is being used for a primary purpose or, as we're seeing at the moment and hearing through choice, uh, secondary purposes. But what are companies doing taking video clips whether they're short or long, and images of people in vehicles. That's a really big question to ask, and people are not aware of it. They are actually having private conversations in cars as they you know, travel around. So there's got to be some kind of um, information and awareness raising by these uh, large companies. It, it strikes me that it's very similar to you know installing a new program on your computer. You go through this long long list of things that you agree to, which you don't really read and you just kind of click through. We heard from Toby Hagen yesterday that, strangely, one of the better companies in this space is Tesla, which is quite open about what it can and can't do with your information. Uh, So is it just a matter of actually reading through that whole swathe of, of, uh, of gobbledygook that they give you before you press the button and say yes? I think it's more than that, Nick. Um, A lot of us have tried to opt out of features and functions in smart infrastructure and smart uh, products that we buy, uh, and the opting out sometimes fails. Or if you do opt out, you've opted out of everything. There is no in-between, you know, opting out of this and that. So who wants to disable their GPS navigation system, but at the same time, who wants their every location um, waypoint being used in a chronicle somewhere and sold on to advertisers and i do need to raise awareness here cars are not just cars they're not just a shell they're actually a a computer they're made up of three major hubs called electronic control units there are on average 70 computers uh, on every sing- in every single car in about 2,000 chips. And these are processing now and sending back to base. Now, where is that data being stored? Um, unfortunately, much of it is being stored on the cloud at its, in its raw form. And that means it is subject to the potential for hacking. Uh, we do have evidence of remote hacks on vehicles. The smarter they're getting, the Jeep Cherokee in 2015, uh, all sorts of wonderful things were happening to that in terms of hackers, uh, gaining access of the steering wheel, gaining access of the brake system, of the music entertainment system, and so much more. So a car is now a collaboration of stakeholders coming together to offer a service. It's not just driving experience, but it's more. It's all the features and functions that we love in our vehicles and the whole thing is we're getting more and more automated uh you know fully automated cars where i'm from at arizona state university uh, are on display every day they pick up customers and they drop them off at d- different points but you know as a service uh when you're hailing down a taxi that's in a fully automated sense uh, with no driver in the front you know that your data is probably going to be used for things like safety and road access and other things, but you don't think that the data is going to be used uh, as a way to help advertisers know more about your biometrics and yourself. Even in your not, if you're not in a smart car, and I'm not, but I use Google Maps, it must be at least every other day to find somewhere that I'm going, and I would assume that they're having to track me. That's just... That's the way the map system works. Uh, Is there any worry about even this technology, which goes in even the dumbest of cars? 
So uh, Google Maps, when you want to break it down, this, what we talk about is a value chain. What's behind that ability to give you uh, an originating point and a destination point and a route to get there? Uh, if it's purely based on the nav system, it's just going to the satellite. No one's getting that data. If, however, the vehicle is tracking your location, and you can find that out in the terms and conditions, most likely Google and is, is the content provider and the service provider, but the telecommunications provider could actually be a cellular company that offers the connection between the car and the cloud. There might be an AI and machine learning company that's gaining information for product development and actually data. So using data to train the vehicle so that it is more safety, especially for driver assistance. Uh, there could be other related companies, uh, component manufacturers, um, people who we would say are pretty much internet providers. We don't know. We don't know who's getting the data, how they're getting it, and which brands are actually sharing not just driver data, but additional location data and additional data like short video clips and images in cars. I mean, really, why would you need that? The question is, has it got to do with liability, insurance, compliance? Why? As I mentioned, you're with the Faculty of Business and Law, and we get into legal areas here, not just consent, but actually someone else making money off you. Uh, we've seen big name Hollywood celebrities say, no, you cannot use my voice to train your AI. And yet what we're hearing is companies like Kia and Hyundai collecting voice recognition data and selling it to another company. Is there any recourse here? Can they do that legally, make money off your biometric information? Well, if we do have weak privacy laws, uh, yes, this is sensitive data, but Obviously, no one's raising alarm bells yet to ask what is going on. Can they be doing this, especially for secondary uses of data? So perhaps what we could say is it's all good and well for our current and future uh, cars to be collecting data for safety, for one's well-being, for, for roadworthiness, for certification, but not, not good for frivolous activities like passing it on to advertisers. So we do have a weak privacy act that was established in 1988. But I also want to bring attention to the Surveillance Devices Act and the Telecommunications Interception Act. Yeah. There is more than just privacy going on here. And we do have regulations in the EU, uh, especially for automotive uh, organizations, because what you're looking at is the whole supply chain and the risk across the supply chain of automotive parts. Where are the parts being manufactured? Who has access? Who will regulate them? We can point to the WP29. We can also look at the ISO SAE 21434 standards that are looking at harmonization of vehicle regulation and actually who has certification to repair cars because what you don't want is remote access and cybersecurity risks running risks in vehicles when someone wants to just switch them off. So someone listening to me right now will be driving one of these cars and there'll be a screen in front of them and they'll be a little bit worried about it. What do you suggest they do? Oh, we want to demand access to the screen. You know, we want to demand access to the data that's emanating from the vehicle. What we're seeing is with emerging technologies, which are complex, we don't have access to the data that's emanating from them. I'll give you a basic example, a heart pacemaker. Somebody who wants to know whether their heart pacemaker is working does not have access to exception reports or fault reports or any reports about the data that is about heartbeats, right? The same thing is happening with the cars. You want to... You wanna, create an environment where data is being taken in an unauthorized fashion and collected for secondary uses, tell us what data you're taking, exactly what it looks like, define it. Because right now what we have are all these plays. I'll give you some examples of the terms and conditions we're reading. A third party, an AI ML company, a telecommunications provider, an internet provider, a contractor, related companies, uh, component manufacturers, OEMs. These are all just terms being thrown around without definition. Uh, one company said uh, they take voice consumption data. What's that, Nick? Is that your conversations in the car? Come clean and basically define what you're taking, when you're taking it, and provide access. If you're taking visual recordings, I actually think that's against the law. So the, the information they're giving us about the information is, is still too vague in many cases. We actually don't know what they're taking, even though it looks like they're being transparent. I agree with you. I mean, and, and we do know, Choice pointed out to one consumer 
who bought a vehicle and then read the terms and conditions, regretted that uh, he had bought that vehicle, asked for his money back and never got it back. Uh, this, this needs to be spelled out at the time we sign on the dotted line. And I'm not being, if I can say, a Luddite. I do believe our cars will be smart cars in the not too distant future. I think we already have some of these. We can point to the Tesla and some of the other uh, Hyundai and Kias coming out. But we do also have to look at why is this data being collected? Where is it being stored? Uh, what am I okay with? And we can choose, you know, buyer beware, caveat emptor. We can choose the kind of vehicles we want. But increasingly, we are going to see a lot of this data being used to train um, smarter systems to do better. I'm all for that, especially for driver assistance and reducing accidents on the road. What I'm not okay with is the frivolous use of biometrics, as one lawyer put it. Uh, and the fact that people are not aware uh, that these vehicles are at risk at times of cybersecurity breaches. So we do need to move towards harmonisation of regulation and respond more effectively locally here in Australia uh, beyond our state and federal laws uh, that are there. They're watered down privacy laws, really, and we need companies to abide by uh, legislation when it's in, in place. Great to talk to you, Katina Michael. Thanks very much. Thank you, Nick. That's uh, Katina Michael, uh, University of Wollongong's Faculty of Business and Law. She's also a professor in the School for Future of Innovation in Society and the School of Computing and Augmented Intelligence at Arizona State University. Jules in Ulladulla has given us a call. Hello, Jules. Hey, Nick. How are you doing? I'm going well. What's on your mind? Um, look, just to cut a long story short, I just bought a second-hand car from a dealership in Newcastle and... It arrived um, and all the information of the previous owners was in the NAV. Like where, where they were going home, where work was, all that sort of Person, stuff? All their personal information, oh. everything in the car. So you do that, if you sold a laptop, you would wipe it, right? Absolutely. It, it, it sounds like it would be a simple thing for a dealer to go, let's, let's wipe this. And, you know, I, I was fortunate. I went to fair trading because the car that was delivered was not um, to, you know, was just misleading everything. Yeah. But to actually put, to try and set up my personal information, and I'm looking going, really? This just, this is just beyond ridiculous. Oh. Well, that's something to look out for if you're selling a used car with uh, a whole lot of those computers in it. Thank you, Jules. Good warning. No worries. Yeah, good to talk to you, Jules. In uh, Aladala.